On May 31st, 1964, Dan Gable's sister, Diane, was raped and murdered at their home in Waterloo, Iowa. What was thought to be one of the worst moments in Dan Gable's life ended up driving him to be great. Some background on Dan Gable. He was born on October 25th, 1948 in Waterloo, Iowa. His father was a real estate agent and a former high school wrestling star. and His mother was a homemaker. In high school, Gable ran track, swam, played baseball, football, and wrestled. After the death of his sister, Gable became, quote, a horse with blinders on as far as wrestling was concerned, end quote. Wrestling was by far his best sport, and he wanted to give his parents something positive in their lives. Gable went on to wrestle at Waterloo West High School, where he went undefeated with 64 wins and 25 pins. After that, he continued his collegiate career at Iowa State, where he won 117 matches in a row with two NCAA titles. His lone loss was to Larry Owens in the NCAA Finals his senior year. This loss propelled Gable to become an Olympic champion. Gable stated in the book, Season on the Mat, quote, I needed to get beat because it not just helped me win the Olympics, but it helped me dominate the Olympics. But more than that, it helped me be a better coach. I would have a hundred times rather not have that had happened, but I used it. Gable ended up winning an Olympic gold medal in 1972. After that, he became the head coach at the University of Iowa in 1976. He won 15 NCAA titles in his 21 years as head coach. Keep in mind the most national championships for a Division I football team is Alabama with 10 championships, and Gable achieved 15 in only 21 years. When Gable left after his 21 years as head coach, he left behind the Iowa style. At its core, it is based on scoring as many points as possible and always working towards the pin. The Iowa st style is a high-paced, intense, aggressive, and mean style of wrestling. It provides more entertainment for the fans. This style and mentality has been passed on by his former wrestlers and the many coaches he has influenced. When Gable retired, he left behind an expectation for the wrestling team. Winning was the expectation and it was not okay to lose. Even today, any season that does not end in an NCAA title is considered a failure. To see the impact that Dan Gable left on his athletes, we'll look at the current and former coaches for the University of Iowa and other schools in the Big Ten Conference. Jim Zaleski wrestled under Gable from 1981 through 1984, and he was a three-time NCAA champion. He became the head coach for the University of Iowa from 1998 through 2006. Tom Brands wrestled under Gable. He was a three-time NCAA champion and an Olympic champion. He became the head coach for the University of Iowa in 2006 and still holds that position. Some other coaches in the Big Ten were associated with Gable during the Gable era. Jay Robinson was an assistant coach to Gable at Iowa and is now the head coach at the University of Minnesota. Barry Davis wrestled for Gable and is now currently the head coach at the University of Wisconsin. Dwayne Goldman wrestled for Gable and is now the head coach at Indiana University. Gable's former acquaintances that become coaches at rival schools shows a success and desire for the Iowa style. To show their appreciation of Coach Gable, the University of Iowa created a seven-foot-tall statue of Dan Gable outside of Carver Hawkeye Arena. Dan Gable currently resides in Iowa City with his wife, Kathy. Here's a short clip that shows an example of the Iowa style. <laughs> 